Welcome to this video on installing LED drawer illumination. Now this is installing illumination versus uh, necessarily installing lights in drawers. You don't always have to put the lights in the drawers to gain illumination. We're also going to be dealing with uh, cabled 12 volt uh, wiring as opposed to battery operated. You won't be looking for bad batteries and uh, other failures. Uh, you'll have a constant power supply once this is hooked up. There are a couple types of switches you can use on your drawer. I'm going to show you how to use a limiter switch and a strike plate so that you have control over how far the drawer opens before the light turns on. This technique should avoid the turn-ons that can occur when you have a drawer with play in it. Look at the compartment your drawer is in. Are the slides mounted on a flat surface or are they mounted on a frame? Frames are more common in dressers, however you can see a frame or a flat surface. This is important because we're going to cover both mounting techniques. Next you need to decide if you're going to do in-drawer lighting or over-drawer lighting. Over-drawer lighting is a little easier in that you only have to put one light strip in and then the only thing you're worrying about is the switch loop. However, to do over-drawer lighting you need to have an edge to put the light on or create one. If you're looking at a dresser, the dresser needs to have at least 8 millimeters of edge above the drawers to put the light strip on. If you don't have an overhang to mount the lights on, then you need to evaluate if you can put lights in the drawer. To put lights in the drawer, you need to make sure you have enough space for the light to mount. There either has to be a board to mount it on now, or space to add one should you need it. You also need to make sure that what you're storing in that drawer isn't going to scrape on that surface and damage the lights. Tools and parts for this job. Drill, drill bit, right angle drill or drill adapter, hot glue gun, soldering iron, small screwdrivers, small screws of this variety, wire, terminal block, long drill bit, wire management, limiter switches, wood to mount limiter switches on I recommend three quarters by half inch at least one foot of 18 gauge thermostat wire some quarter inch thick stock some 3 sixteenths inch stock LEDs LED power supply the real wiring configuration for overdraw lights looks like this basically you're taking the positive power and you're sending it down to the switches whichever switch closes returns that positive power and you send it back to the light now you have the option of adding a dimmer switch which I like to do to control the light that's illuminated over the drawers. So to do the dimmer switch it would look like this. Basically I go through the switches first and then I go to the dimmer switch next and then to the lights. And the purpose of that is uh, the dimmer switch is off when there's no power. This is furniture so I like to install a fuse. So we'll put a fuse in here. So some people may choose to do the reed switches. To do reed switch uh, this is the wiring diagram. If you're going to do the in drawer lighting you're basically using the same wiring plan except it's, it's connected a little differently. There is a extra wire that's going to be at the connection behind the drawer. And the other thing is you're going to run the negative down to each position as well. So you're going to run from the power, you're going to run the positive and negative to each position. And then you're going to run the positive from there to the switch. That's going to return and it's going to connect to the wire going to the positive on the light. And then the negative is going to connect to the negative that you ran down through the power bus. So it's a very similar design, just a little different. And then if you're using reed switches with the in-drawer lighting, it would look like this. The limit switch technique requires a strike plate to depress the switch as the drawer closes. For frame drawers, we use a 3 16 inch thick piece of material. The plate is going to mount on the side of the drawer. And we're going to cut a little ramp on the end. So as the drawer closes, it will depress the switch open and closed. For flush mounted installations we use a quarter inch thick piece of material. In this case we were trying to get the switch to float in the half inch gap that's available over the drawer slide. As the drawer closes the switch will ride up the ramp that's cut off a notch on the corner of the material. To determine the length of your plate you need to determine two things. How far do you want the dresser drawer to open before the light turns on? The next is where are you going to mount the plate on the drawer in relationship to the switches. I like to mount the plates as close as I can to even with the back of the drawer. That way it's easier to measure the distance for the drawer opening. You want to make sure the plate is long enough that so when the drawer is closed it does not accidentally slide off. The switch does not slide off the end. You need to put an angle on the end of the plate for the switch wheel to run up. The angle doesn't matter. It should be fairly shallow. I've used 11 degrees. I've used 7 degrees but you need to determine uh, roughly how much you want it to be. Make sure there's enough flat area beyond the ramp to trigger the switch. There are several ways to make the angle on your plate. Uh, obviously a chop saw. Chop saws are very dangerous. If you do this, do it properly. Make sure you secure the piece on a piece of wood and don't have your fingers anywhere near it. Another way to do it, especially with the plastic, is to sand it. You can either use a belt sander or a disc sander, or you could actually do it by hand by rubbing it back and forth. While my early plates were made of wood and had holes in them, I found that double sided tape is far more easier to install and uh, works just fine. So this part's going to cover doing a framed dresser. 
When the drawer slides are mounted directly to the side, normally the wiring is done from the back since you can't get the wires around the drawer slides. In a frame cabinet, you have an option of drilling holes between the levels to bypass the drawer slides. Determine where you're going to install your switches. Installing your switches should be where it's easy to get a screwdriver in to install them. In some cases, that might entail installing the switch on the bottom side of the rail. If you're running a frame cabinet, I recommend you make these little caddies to mount your switches on. They only have to be about four inches long. There's no exact length required. On here, you're gonna mount the switch and a piece of terminal block. And then you're gonna go ahead and wire the switch permanently to the terminal block. Now, when you go ahead and do the installation, you can go ahead and just connect to the terminal block. The only requirement is that the top of the platform be above the drawer slide. Keep in mind when you're making a single switch caddy, that orientation is important. You're gonna to need to figure out where you're gonna mount your caddy first and then you're going to need to mark on the caddy where the switch is going to be positioned. And this is relevant because uh, obviously you have left side of the drawer and right side of the drawer, but say you were mounting on the left side of the drawer and then you determined you were going to flip the caddy over and mount it on the underside of the rail, the switch would end up on the wrong side unless you uh, compensated and mounted the switch on the other side. Making these double-sided switch caddies uh, does cut down on the number of caddies you need, but do keep in mind that uh, you'll notice that I had to cut these to the exact width of the rail. You want the caddy to be flush against the back of the drawer slide on both the left and the right. If you don't have the tools to do this, you might have to uh, use some standard uh, three-quarter inch stock and just use single-sided caddies. So we're gonna be using the normally closed connections on your switch. Make sure you understand what those are. The normally closed are the ones that are closed when the switch is in resting position. Remember, we're gonna open the drawer, the switch is gonna go to resting position, it's going to close the circuit. Position the switch on the caddy so it extends over the side just shy of the width of the drawer slide. In this case, we want the end of the strike to be just shy of one half of an inch over the edge, and then screw it down. These blocks have the mounting holes, the terminal block, and the switches. Notice the orientation of the switches varies. You're going to wire from one terminal to the terminal block and on the switch and then from the other terminal to the other terminal block. I usually color code my terminal blocks just so I have some sanity of left and right and I'll try to wire to those colors. You do have to solder the wires onto the limit switch. Make sure your soldering iron is good and hot. If you're using reed switches, you could also mount them on the caddy. It's a good idea after you make the switch caddy to go ahead and test it and make sure that when you depress the switch the circuit uh, opens as it's supposed to uh, versus uh, having to diagnose a problem after you install it. If you're not going to do a dimmer switch or anything, uh, this is what it would look like with the caddies and the physical wires going between the caddies. Now keep in mind that you do have the option at any time, you don't have to wire these in line. If you need to branch off and do another drawer, you can just attach in on one of them and like this red line here, add another caddy. So now we're going to go back and look at the physical wiring with the dimmer switch and the fuse in it. And basically what really changes when you're, really, when you're wiring this is you're trying to wire from the power source to the dimmer location first. You're going to branch off, go out to the switches, and then you're going to return back to the dimmer and then go out to the light. So at this point I'm going to take you through several installs so you can see the different options and things you're going to encounter while you're putting illumination on your drawers. This first frame dresser has three drawers at the top and then three levels of two drawers each. I've decided to use a double switch where I can and then in one position I'll use a single switch caddy. I like to install a dimmer switch for over drawer lighting so I control the amount of light. You have to determine if the dimmer switch will fit inside the drawer. If it does fit under the top, then you can stick it above a drawer and then reach in and control it. Otherwise, I recommend putting it down on the bottom. This dresser has plenty of room to move around inside. It does have some dust barriers between the levels that we'll have to drill through. And we're going to be running most of the cables along the back, which is out of the way of the drawers when they're closing and opening. You will have to be prepared with a right angle drill to drill in tight places when necessary. The dimmer is going to get installed in the upper right corner, so that means that the switch loop needs to terminate there, the power needs to run to that location, and the light wire needs to run to that location. So we can start installing the switch caddies. In installing the caddy, the switch lever needs to be at the position you anticipate it hitting 
the strike plate when closed and that's where you're going to go ahead and screw it in. Now you can go ahead and run the wires between the caddies and you're going to do that uh, all the way up until you get up to where you're going to install the dimmer switch or join all the wires together. I decided to drill a hole in the front of this dresser in order to get the light cable into where the switches are. In this particular dresser there's an option I had to drill through the bottom of the trim up into the compartment and I was able to do that and you can't see the wires at all because the wire goes uh, up from where the light is mounted. Now remember you don't have to run the LEDs all the way to the end and you need to look for a clear spot to run the hole. Make sure you look inside the cabinet. Uh, there's always blocks and other things supporting the lid and connections and things like that. Where you drill the hole you, your drill bit needs to fit all the way through and you also need to have no obstruction so you get the wire through. Now keep in mind that the hole doesn't need to be big, 1 8 of an inch will work fine. And what we're going to be doing is using some solid 18 gauge thermostat wire to hook up the light. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your light strip, you're going to cut it to length, and you're going to put 290, a 90 degree bend on each end of ca the cable and the direction uh, you have to hold it up and to make sure it lines the hole, and the direction the hole is going to be off the LED strip. Go ahead and solder that on your LED strip. Keep in mind that solid copper wire takes a little bit more heat to get it to bond properly and make sure you use a good amount of flux. So the next thing you do is you're going to insert that wire through the hole and you're going to peel the adhesive off and you're going to stick your LED strip on it. Sometimes a little easier if you do it from the bottom so you can put it on straight. Uh, you should end up um, all the way down to the other end and you just need to be over the drawers and out of the way to the end so cut it to that length. So inside the box, uh, what you can do is put your finger on the end of the, the connection outside on the LED strip, and then you're going to bend that wire around. Solid wire is really good for holding its shape, but we want to make sure we secure it inside because the penalty is every time you move it inside, it'll move the LED strip outside. So go ahead and take a, a wire management nut and uh, just put it over top, maybe upside down, and hold that securely in place. These dressers have a space over the foot to get the wires in, so I've decided to run the power wire behind the front face up to where the dimmer is going to be. So once that wire is there, we have all the components we need to hook things up. The power in negative is going to go to the V- minus on the dimmer switch. The power in positive is going to go to one of the wires on the switch loop. In this one, it goes on the black one, which you can see in the background there. It has a red zip tie on it to indicate it's positive. The wire comes back from the switch loop on the red, and that plugs into the dimmer in, giving it power. Then, on the other two connections, it is the out to the LED lights, and that's how you wire it. Now you have to install your strike plates. What I recommend is put a little double-sided tape on there, stick them on, make sure you get them in the right spot, and if you're going to put them on permanently, stick them on hard, or if you're going to screw them, go ahead and screw them in once you get them set right. So the power wire is going to go down below the dresser. In my case, I'm going to connect it through a fuse, and then I'm going to plug in the power. And the fuse is just some extra protection. Uh, you know, you're really trusting your power supply if you get a short to shut off properly, and the fuse just make sure that happens. I, I put my fuses in. I rate them. Uh, I try to put them in just a little bit more amperage in the light. So in this particular dresser, it's about a 1 amp, so I'll put a 1 to 1.5 amp fuse in. I do have a video on wire management, but I do want to remind you that when you're putting screws or nails inside your dresser to make sure that they are shorter than the thickness of the surface you are putting them in, especially if it's like the top of the side. Now we're going to do a frame dresser that has very little space inside uh, to move around and get the wires in. Uh, the other attribute of this dresser is we're not going to drill a hole in the front. I'm going to show you how to put the lights on the front and make the connection come in through the back. So this dresser, the drawers go almost all the way to the back, and there's really no way to get the wire behind the drawers. So I decided to run the wires in an upside-down U, up the sides, over the top, and down the other side. So I do have to be careful not to put any screws through the surface of the dresser. The rails are fairly narrow, so even though I had an opportunity for a double switch here, there's really not enough space to get it on comfortably. Another issue is a lot of the rails are very close to the top, so there's not enough room to get the screwdriver or drill in. So I had to mount them on the bottom of the rail. That really presents no problem, I just have to make the caddy the right direction. Once I came up with a wiring plan, I decided to go ahead and uh, drill holes to get the wires between the rails. Now in this particular one, the, the, the dimmer does not fit on the top, so the dimmer is on the bottom. So that means that all of my services need to run to where the dimmer position is on the bottom. The power needs to go there, the LED light needs to go there, and the switches need to go there. These dimmers have huge amounts of space inside, so what I decided to do is take apart this dimmer 
and I actually put all the services I wanted in. I put the fuse in there and I put the LED, the power connector in there and then I put a connector out to the lights. So the dimmer is going to go underneath. You, you rarely touch these things. You just want the ability to adjust it. So uh, I, I put this right here on the side and yeah I could have turned it upside down and hidden it more but the reality is I can't see it today and I could always move it tomorrow so that's where it is. To get the LED lights on the front without drilling a hole what we're going to do use is we're going to use some flat copper to run the power all the way to the back of the dresser along the edge lip and run it inside. Now when I originally started my dressers I said hey I'm just going to run the light all the way around the edges and that would take care of the same problem. The issue is that it just casts way too much light into the room and you don't need that light on the sides. So this solution is going to, to uh, resolve that. I'm going to show you how to make blank copper tape using non-waterproof LED strings. If you didn't want to make any, I did manage to find it on superbrightleds.com. They do sell it there in 8mm and 10mm widths by the foot. To make the copper tape, you'll need a piece of uh, non-waterproof LED that goes from the front to the back of your dresser. Go ahead and take a soldering iron and you're going to heat one side of the uh, LED or the resistor. You're going to stick a little razor blade under there, you're going to peel it up. And then you're going to go ahead and do the other side and take them right off. When you're done, you want to do a continuity test to make sure you didn't short anything out. And that's going to be your piece of wire to run from front to back. So in order to use this, you're going to take the LED uh, light that you make for the front. You're going to uh, solder on some 90 degree angles. And you're going to solder that onto the tape. Make sure you hold it upside down so you put it on the right direction. Now where your blank copper run reaches the back of the dresser, you're also going to need to solder some wires on there. I'd recommend using uh, either the solid wire and forming it or using some fairly light wire. The important thing is that you do intentionally bend that wire to the proper angle before you install it. You're going to run that wire uh, around to the back of the unit and then you're going to run it through a hole inside, into the inside. You can see we put a terminal block in there and what we did then is we extended that wire down to the dimmer switch at the bottom of the dresser. Since there are no dust barriers between the drawer levels, I was able to reach in on several of the drawers and just uh, put the strike plate on and then uh, go ahead and screw the caddy down in the correct location just by looking in over the top or bottom. The other way should be to put them in from the outside. Uh, once you're able to hook up your power here, uh, you should be able to test things out and see how the drawers work. Next we're going over flush mounted drawer slides. First verify the width of the drawer slide. This drawer slide process is designed for drawer slides that are half inch in, in width. You want to make sure that you have that. If it's less, it's going to be hard. If it's more, you can need more spacers. Reaching inside a, a compartment is very difficult and you can do the left side or the right side. I like to do the left side because I'm right handed. It's easier to reach in there. So this is what I recommend. Let's take a make a template of the back of the box. We need to note where the rails are and the bottom of the drawers. Uh, the last thing you need to put in your template is the back of the drawer. You need to know where the drawer ends. And if you have a very short drawer, you need to uh, uh, make room for the plate. So if you, if you have a direct drawer slide that slides all the way in and out of full extension, you're fine. If you have these ones that uh, you have to lift in, make sure you don't put the plate too close, uh, preventing you lifting the drawer and setting it in, in, in the track. For this drawer configuration, we'll be using the quarter inch thick strike plate with the corner cut out. I found recently that you can mount the strike plate with a notch on the bottom and it, it's a little easier to measure off the drawer slide to get the switch position. Now keep in mind the strike plate can go above the drawer slide, below the drawer slide, wherever you find space to do the install and get the switch in. So once I get all my, my strike plates cut, I lay them out on the sheet of paper and I determine about where the switch is going to go. It doesn't have to be exact at this point. On the tall drawers I decided it's going to be about three and a quarter. On the shorter drawer uh, I actually had it too high. I had to put it more towards the bottom so that uh, my, when I mounted the plate on the drawer it didn't interfere with mounting the drawer. So once I have the plates laid out I need to determine uh, where, I'm gonna, where I want the switch to hit on the plate. I like to make sure my switch is at least an inch from the end of the plate so it doesn't accidentally roll off the end. And then what I do is I go ahead and I cut the wire uh, for the switch to go from the switch to uh, where the uh, main line will be in the back. So I'll go ahead and uh, solder that line on the switch and now I'm going to make the trunk to go along the back. You could use wire caps or something like that. In this case we're going to use terminal block. These are 5 amp the short ones. And we're going to put a terminal block at each drawer level. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our, our loop wire down among the terminal block 
and then we're going to plug the switch directly into the terminal block to create the uh, loop that's going to close when the switch closes. The nice thing about the terminal block is it keeps everything uh, nice and tight and you can uh, mount all this ahead of time and then set it in the drawer and it kind of holds its shape. The other thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the wire management and put it in place and uh, leave some gap there on the wire management so you can move the wires around. So we should have a complete wire assembly when we're done here. We need to space out the limiter switch a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is take some of this 3 16th of an inch uh, plastic. We're going to cut some chunks out and we're going to drill some holes. And we want the limiter switch to be right on the edge. We don't want any of the plastic to uh, be at the same level as the switch because we don't want it to snag when the switch engages. So it's going to be right level with the body of the switch. Okay, now it's time to go reach inside the drawer. Now remember, what's important here is where the switch goes, not where all this wire management goes. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to be mounting the switch, switches first. And to do that, we're going to take uh, some double-sided tape of some type or some tape. You can use blue tape. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to tape the, the strike plate onto the wall of the drawer compartment where it's going to be on the drawer. And that's going to allow us to place the switches accurately. Just tack the wiring harness at the top to hold it in place. So we're going to line that switch about an inch from the end of the strike plate and we're going to go ahead and drill our holes and uh, go ahead and mount that switch. And we're just going to go through and do that for each switch on the cable set. Once that's done, we can pull the strike plates off. We can pull that double-sided tape off and uh, put it on the other side because we're going to need it there in a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, install our wire management. So we're just going to peel the adhesive off. We're going to stick all this down. And then where the terminal blocks are, it's much easier to, to screw the terminal blocks if they're attached to the wall. And we're going to go ahead and screw all those in. And when we're done, we're going to have a, you know, all of our wiring harness installed and ready to uh, insert the drawers. So to put the strike plate on the drawer, you need to know an offset if you have one. Uh, mine was about 9 16 of an inch between the top of the drawer and the bottom of the drawer slide. So I add that to my 3 and a quarter inches I mounted on the large drawers. I measure down and I uh, lightly tape on the strike plate. And then I slide the drawer in, I make sure it lines up perfectly. If it does, I pull it out and I push that strike plate on there really hard and that drawer is done. So this harness was for over drawer lighting, so I need to bring in the power to supply uh, one side of the loop. In this case, uh, I have two other drawers, so I'm going to bring in the loop from the other two drawers, tie it in, then tie in the uh, positive power onto one of the legs, and uh, then the return power is going to come back. I'm going to put it in this uh, blue connection on the other side, and that's going to be my return to lights at the top. And so that being said, let's do our overdraw lighting. Overdraw lighting is the same as in drawer lighting; it's just doing it at one level. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, drill a hole here for our overdraw light. In this particular case, uh, I could have drilled through the uh, five and a half inch uh, top. Uh, piece of wood there, but I see a little gap on the left uh, where there's a spacer. I'm going to go through that gap. I'm going to bring the wire over top. I'm going to have a terminal block right there to give me a nice solid connection. Then I'm going to extend that connection all the way back to my switch loop, and that's going to give me the power to the lights in the front. Now to mount the, to mount the lights here, uh, a standard procedure that I use where I uh, solder the wires on the end and then run the strip. But uh, the wires, uh, I always like to put my lights as close as I can to the front edge so I get better projection down across the drawers. In this particular case, I, the uh, lead wire is pretty strong, uh, pretty long, it was a little heavy, and uh, this is granite. So I went ahead and took the hot glue gun and I just smeared it around there on that wire connection to uh, make sure that wire connection wasn't dragging and pulling down the wires at the lead of the LED strip. So let's back up a moment and look at wiring again. So if we were doing in drawer lighting, this harness would be the same. We'd use a three position terminal block. Uh, it'd be wired a little differently. Uh, we'd be wiring the spine with the positive and negative into uh, positive and negative blocks all the way down. We'd have that third position uh, for the return power from the switch. To go to that third position, we in turn would take the light uh, positive cable, plug it in that third position. We'd we plug the light negative cable in the negative position and that gives us the light for each shelf and of course we'd be running a whip uh, to the front of the shelf uh, where the light would be installed and of course put wire management on that to keep it within the uh, half inch next to the drawer. This in drawer light set was wired without the terminal blocks. You can see how it's um, much messier and you got to deal with extra wires floating around. To keep my in drawer lighting as flush as possible I normally solder a lead wire onto the end of the light. Sometimes I use the aluminum track. Uh, aluminum track is nice. It does give it a protective cover, but it is an, an extra expense. 
once you're ready to install the light, uh, normally you put the light on first and then work from the light back to your main wiring harness. Now keep in mind that uh, in some drawers like this one here, the the light is going to come in above the drawer slide. You're going to have to go around the back of the drawer slide and then down to your switch or your terminal block where you're going to plug in. It's not uncommon that flush mount or box cabinets don't have any dividers between the drawers. So when you pull all the drawers out, you're going to see one big empty compartment. You're going to have to go ahead and install a divider to mount lights on if you're doing in-drawer lights. You're going to use uh, metal is probably best. You can buy that at the hardware store, bend it, and um, screw it in on the ends. But you do want to make sure you try to get it as, uh, fairly close to the drawer above, um, but make sure you leave a gap where it's not hitting, because you're going to find it's usually a pretty tight fit once you get it in there. So you want to go ahead and set up good wire management. You don't want any of the cables to touch the drawers when the drawers are opening and closing. If you're drilling holes and frames between levels, make sure you keep those holes centered and keep the line taut. If you're going to go around or over the drawers, make sure you secure the, secure the drawers in every corner and make sure there's no slack in there so that they can't get caught on a drawer at a later time. If you're having problems with your controls and things aren't working right, uh, the nice thing about the limiter switch is you can hear an audible click. So make sure you hear that click. If you don't, uh, a couple options you have, you can bend the limiter uh, switch arm a little bit to extend it. Another option is to put an extra layer of uh, double-sided tape on the strike plate. You do want to make sure your strike plate alignment is correct and uh, everything is working properly. And then you may want to do some testing of continuity on your wiring, make sure you're getting power. Uh, it depends on the problem you're having, of course. The end result on this project is so worth it. It is so nice to walk in your bedroom, forget to turn on the light and be able to open up and see everything. Or somebody's sleeping and you can open the drawer and see everything. You're really going to like it. I hope you found this video of use. And I do have these other videos if you're interested on uh, wire management, obviously, and uh, motion sensors, uh, installing LED lights on wire shelving, and uh, also on switches.